to City One for more on this. Uh, Don Hutchison joins us, and as uh, Jan Arga Fjortov. Craig, what, what went wrong with City today? Well, what went wrong with them before we saw that Tony goal and the clip there? They should have already been two 0 up. I mean, in the end, it was twenty five percent possession, which is clearly not a lot. But early on in the game, City were lucky not to be three 0 down uh, in fifteen minutes, and then they took over without really creating too many chances. I have to say. Brentford on the counter-attack, particularly in the first half, pacey, strong, looked good defensively. Bear in the mind, they'd, lost, they'd shipped a few goals away from home recently, uh, so they showed that up. Expected an onslaught in the second half. Uh, Possession-wise, it came, but I, I, I never felt... Usually watching City, you go, right, it's coming, it's mm. coming. I never really felt that it was coming. And uh, the keeper didn't have to make that many saves, a few from outside the box. And Erling Haaland, to me, just he, during the game, he cut a frustrated figure. And I don't know what the boys think, but there was a lot of grappling in the box. But he spent a lot of time on the deck today, Erling Haaland. A lot, a lot of time on the floor. Your boy's rubbish now, Jan. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but it was, I, I agree with Craig. That it was not his best game. Foden was not there. Uh, De Bruyne was not there today. And was, there was something slow. There was something predictable over Manchester City. And the second half, they had a lot of possession, but they were just playing their power play forward and back, forward and back. There was no early crosses, not at all. They were just playing that boring kind of game. And I never thought I would say that. But if we see the last games of Manchester City after Liverpool game, Brighton, Leicester away, Fulham, and now Brentford, you just felt that this game will come up. Maybe they could get away with a draw today. The football god wanted, wanted it differently. But that was deservedly. They came out wrong and they ended wrong today. Yeah, this is it. And Jan makes a good point. This isn't really an anomaly today, Don. This is kind of what we've been seeing mm. from City quite a bit over the last few matches. You're right. Uh, and you're talking about the Brentford side, Dan, that are awful away from home this season. The only thing I can... Put my finger on. I think 10 of the 11 starters from Man City are all going to the World Cup. So I don't know if there was anything in that. Maybe they were trying to protect themselves. But Jan's right. Watching that game, and Craig's right as well, they should have been turning up right, uh, uh, Brentford in the first five, ten minutes of the game. And you're watching the game and you're thinking, Thomas Frank's a very intelligent manager, but there's something refreshing about his style when he could try and go toe-to-toe with Man City, but there's every chance it wouldn't work. So he goes a little bit long. We had stats at the Premier League today that they went long and they kept pumping balls in behind and they cut putting the centre-halves under pressure. And he doesn't mind going backwards to come forwards. He's, he's very different. He's, he can play, his team can play football down. They can get it down and play. But, but when you get it up to Ivan Tony, he's an absolute menace in the box. And they've got real aggressive players that I never thought City could deal with today. I thought they started poorly, Man City, and they just couldn't get going. But credit Brentford, I thought they were absolutely terrific and deserved the three points. Uh, as Craig mentioned, yeah, nice response from Tony. Uh, not being selected for the England squad, of course. Yeah, there is something about the presence. I will say for, the, for a lot of the, the Brentford players, like, like what Don is saying, there is something about their presence on the pitch. They're there. And symbolized with Tony. Tony was brilliant today. He is he is so strong in his runs, and is there is a comfort in his run. And of course, I mean, will there be a better day in his football life to score two goals? So you're not taking him to Qatar, and then you take your first away win for your club, and you score two goals. Well, mission accomplished, big time. I think there is a better time, Jan. It's when you score two goals after you've been selected to go to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big, but I, spo- I suppose, you know, that disappointment for him, I, I can't imagine from a footballing perspective. But it was him or Callum Wilson, really, wasn't right. it? And Wilson's been playing well. Although he, he, does yeah. pick up, he does pick up some injuries. But going back to City, uh, two things. Whenever De Bruyne is not quite on his A game, the... Not all the time, but a lot of the times it seeps through the rest of the team. Right. And not that he has a particularly bad game, but it, when he's not picking out those killer passes and when he's not dropping it on a dime almost every time, you're like, oh, he's not quite on his game today. And he wasn't, he's passing, he got caught in possession, and his passing wasn't quite brilliant. And it kind of seeped through the rest of the side because he is the guy that they look to. The other side of the coin is, with all these games, and I've all harped on about it and complained and moaned and, and bitched, uh, wasn't Guardiola one of the ones that harped on about five subs? He only brought on Julian Alvarez. Yeah. 
Mm. He had Grealish and he had yep. Mares too. There's yep. what there's what 170 million oh, give or take worth, mass. worth the talent. Right. Uh, probably more than that now. He had these players to make changes, but he just kept until obviously they got the they got the winner on the break. But he was just chugging away and chugging away, and they weren't really doing anything. I'm thinking he's got to, the, the camera kept but, kept cutting to those players. Yeah. And he brought on Alvarez. Not not a problem with that. He brought on him as an attacker and moved forward and back a bit when he took Cancelo off, who had been booked. But, you know, you've got these other guys on the bench. He, he didn't utilise them. So what that meant... But is it, it would go, oh, go on, yeah. No, just another, another point with, with the boys. I, I mean, I've seen more or less all City games live and you think that the standard for them is to chase for the Champions League. But that defence of Manchester City, I, I'm start doping that. I mean, yes, they're missing Kyle Walker, so they're missing a bit of balance there at the back. Akanji, well, he's OK with the ball. But if you see that defence, I think they're, they're letting the opposition have too many chances in every game I see them play. And if you compare them with, with Arsenal, as we saw Arsenal today as well, they look stronger at the back. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.